All right, good morning, y'all. We're at the boat, getting ready. Woke up at four something this morning. I'm exhausted, not really a morning person, but here we are. Carson and Ed came last night, dropped off all the chum. We've got eight five gallon buckets to make uh, some chum balls with some sand. I'll show you more about that later, but we're going out for grouper opening. Uh, the Live Like Jeff, Jeff Leonia, classic. So hopefully we can put a fish on the podium or at least avoid puking. Avoiding puking is my goal. <laughs> Here with Ed. Carson just ran to grab some more sand for those sand balls, but anyway, we'll see you out there. Yeehaw. All right, guys, it looks nice and calm in this uh, video. The wind's coming out of the north, so we're kind of protected here by the land. But uh, it was blowing from the west at about 30 knots most of the night, so as you can see here, we've got a decent wave coming to the beam. So it's what we call the washing machine, taking waves to the side, current and the wind are opposing each other. All right, we're here and it's pretty, it's pretty bumpy. Woo! We got her all anchored up in the spot here. There's no coordinates on there, right? No. All right, just so gonna show this. All anchored up on this ledge here. The invisibility is terrible. Carson's gonna start chumming for a couple of hours. Can you bring me a Got tons of chum. Can you bring me that bucket of O's, please? All right, we're out here. Carson's dropping chum bombs. All right, we're gonna give you a play-by-play -play of uh, how it works when you're uh, an infant grouper. <laughs> Sorry about this bad audio, guys. I don't know why they would do that. The handicapped children. Are you guys sure? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so Carson gets the nose to die. As soon as I pull the trigger. So, yeah, if it ain't 30 pounds, he's got to catch some crap. He'll be coming up with a 19 and a half inch red. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully it happens. Yeah. Friends and all of us in your minds when you're diving and fishing today and have a good time. We'll see you at the weigh-in no later than 5.30 night. Have a good one, y'all. Good luck. Oh. Game on. Oh. Here we are, ready to hop in. Woo! All right, here we are back in the water, guys. I don't know if you can tell how murky this is, but if you look towards the end of my gun when it kind of falls down here, you can see it's already getting fuzzy towards the tip of my gun. So at the top, we had a big murk layer. There was like five feet of is at the top. And uh, until you got down at least 35, 30, 35 feet, you couldn't start seeing stuff. So you see how the top of the water column here is still real murky, but the bottom wasn't too bad, 20, 25 foot of is. And you see all these holes and caves. That's kind of what we were trying to chum grouper out of. We've seen grouper at this spot a lot. We, we kind of spear it regularly and uh, we had been monitoring which ones had, had been there. Carson had been doing a good job uh, seeing what size fish uh, and grouper were coming out of those holes out of season so that when this opening day came, we'd be ready. And he said he saw a big one and uh, we were trying to see what our, happened with our chum. And I didn't see too much on that dive, honestly. Not what I expected from the amount of chum we dumped in. Uh, but anyway, we was just going down, not all the way to the bottom, just a scope out. And we gave Carson kind of that good dive. And he's just checking out all these holes. This is where we know or at least Carson knows he's been seeing one living coming in and out of there when he's been hunting snapper mm -mm -mm. out of this big hole right there. And usually you'll see them poke their head out of there, but nothing right now. 
And when he starts coming up here, a lot of times they come to see what commotion you're making if they're not in their hole. They're like, hey, what are you doing? You can see right in the middle there, he kind of came to see what all the ruckus was about. And Carson seemed to have a good shot on him, but he must have just been a little too far away. And you can see by how tall he is that he's a pretty, pretty big fish. All right, we dove on our first couple spots. And I didn't see anything at the first spot. At the second spot, I saw um, one. Uh, I saw one. What's up? Uh, we saw one, but no no attempts at shooting it. Didn't really get any uh, any action on it. The second spot, um, saw a decent amount of fish, nothing too crazy. And then Carson uh, saw a nice one. And then uh, team tear out uh, happened, right? What happened, Carson? If you bought it, don't believe me. I'll show you. Bit of flesh right there. That's what we're having for dinner. That's all we got. Carson saw a pretty decent sized black that would have done pretty well in the tournament. Shot him and he tore out and sometimes that's what happens. So we moved, we're coming. Still got some more buckets here that we're slowly just making more chump balls with. Oats chum and sand dropping into the bottom as best we can. Got Cap Med over here. See what I got right here? <laughs> Taking a nap. And here we go. He's getting cold. I'm cold. That was suck, right? Low and uh, pretty good. Not easy time in the day. What happened? We probably got, I don't know, eight foot at the top and maybe 20. 20, 25 foot at the most at the bottom. So, and we're sitting at about 50 feet of water. So, let's see what happens. Yeah. All right, back in the water, taking a dive right now. Just kind of checking out the makeup of the bottom here. Very similar to the last spot. As far as there's a lot of holes here, a lot of little ledges, stuff to hide under. We hadn't particularly seen Big Grouper here, but we knew that this was a good ledge. Um, and so usually around the beginning of the season, all those Big Grouper are still along there. You can see that big part right in the middle, right there. We expected it to be something in that big ledge or in the, in the cave system there. You see the viz is so bad, sometimes you can lose track. They're looking at me, looking for me, and then I had to kind of holler at them. Here's the next dive. You can see it's a little bit clearer. A little clearer along this deeper area. I think at the bottom of this ledge, it was more like 65, 70, and on the top, it was more like 50. So once we get down a little farther, the farther we would go down, the clearer it would get, but you can see there's all sorts of All right, so we move stuff. spots to the other spot. Uh, still a little murky, not a lot of fish, even after chumming for like 30 minutes. Uh, we moved to this ledge here, you can murky. see. Okay, it was really murky. It's a, a dark green there, that's a ledge. We're in about 53 feet, we're marking some fish. Some hard bottom. Carson's. Uh, Every time you turn that on, I'm just sitting here playing with chum. Carson's, that's all they think uh, that's all I do. Carson's the chum machine. Chum he's the chum guy. boss. So, uh, he's gonna. They call me the chum baller. He's gonna chum us up here and, uh. I'm a baller in high school, but. Hopefully, we can a get a grouper, because right now we're, uh, 0 for 1 uh, with Team Tear out here, so. <laughs> but we'll see what happens. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Nice, great holding shot. Now he saw this fish on his way up. It was a really long dive. He stayed down there for a while. And on the way up, he saw him and took a big shot. He had to chase him a little bit, so he's down there probably a little longer than he expected. 
You see him holding his gun, kind of handle up, letting us know that he needs a little help. And you can see I'm hustling over because I could tell it was a longer dive. And you can see there I'm saying, get Carson. And uh, the reason I'm saying that is because I could just tell his body language is a little off. It was a longer dive. I was a little worried about an LMC or maybe a blackout. I don't know, but he just kind of was high up in the water column, had his arms out of the water. So, you know, number one priority is is keeping each other safe. I dropped my gun. Ed dove to get it. Here, Ed holler. Now, didn't get your gun, but I knew we'd be able to get it back. It was 70 foot of water, and I'd rather drop it and have two hands for. Safety. Oh, thank you for spot. That's a good spot, guys. Thank you. So nice grouper, Carson. I think that one ended up being about uh, 26, 27 inches, something like that. Not a, not the most monstrous grouper in the world, but the visibility is this bad, and the currents this bad, and the wind. That sometimes that's all it takes. Oh, on this dive, I'm coming up now. I just located my gun since I had dropped it. I used Ed's gun while I went down, just in case there was a big now. grouper down there waiting. I didn't see it until I was like ready to come back up, but this is right under the boat. I'll get on the next dive. That fish was 26 and a half. Why don't you go ahead? Get back up. Dude, you guys want me to throw more chum? Or not? <laughs> Carson always talking about chum and you want. love it. Love it. All right, so I'm diving down to get my gun here. It's a pretty cool dive. You can see my gun right in the middle, that long. Right there. I reach down, grab it. And I'm like, hey, I'm down here. I might as well look around and see if there's a grouper around. And there was fish everywhere. You can see that nurse shark. Really nice. You see those little ledges and caves and pits. And I see this big yellow jack. And I couldn't resist. And I almost got the kill shot on that one. I ended up hitting him right in between the brain and the spine. It was really close. It could have been a couple millimeters either way. It would have stoned the fish and he wouldn't have ran like this. I didn't expect him to run like that, but in the GoPro, he doesn't look as big as he actually was. I think this one ended up weighing 20 pounds, which is big for a yellow jack. They're normally, I couldn't resist with a yellow jack. They're normally eight or so, eight or 10. On the wrecks, they get a little bigger, but this one was very big. That's one of my favorite eating fish too. It's kind of dumb to shoot a fish that's not in the tournament. Sorry, I couldn't resist. Thank you. You want to shoot because it's a group or hogfish tournament. That's all you really want to target and shoot. You don't want to waste your time because all three of us were busy, but you can see where I shot that one. And I thought I was going to stone him and only waste my time, not theirs. And then uh, they actually helped me pull that, that thing in. And, it was so strong, it kind of tore through. But. All right, y'all. We're back on the boat. Chumming Carson again. is chumming oh, again <laughs> in every video, like always. <laughs> but the reason why he chums, we got a grouper in here. I don't know if you can see it under all this ice. We got a grouper. And then I'm an idiot and shot a giant yellow jack because I couldn't help it. In a grouper tournament. Come on. But anyway. We're gonna get back out there and chum another spot and hopefully get a bigger one because that one that one will be a grouper on the boat, but we want we want the big daddy. So way to go Carson to make sure he didn't Woo! get skunked. And, uh, anything you wanna to say to the camera ad? No. <laughs> Yeehaw. Alright, here we are diving again. I really liked this spot. You can see there's all sorts of fish around. This is my grouper shot here. If you keep an eye in the bottom middle, you'll see that grouper right there. 
and he was aiming down, kind of angling at this, this hole. And I could tell he was gonna try and start to go in there. There were some nurse sharks around there in that ledge and I didn't want to let him get in there because sometimes they see you, they go in there and they never come back out. So I shot him right there. You can see him trying to get in there, that nurse shark trying to get him, but I was kicking up, just trying to pull him and keep him from getting in there. And you can see he's almost got in there. I just kept kicking, kicking. I was able to keep him from wedging himself in there. And then outrun the sharks here, trying to get them. Just a couple nurse. Once you get about halfway up, they tend to back off. And here comes Carson to make sure those sharks don't get that fish. And it was pretty murky, so there are other creatures around. Yeehaw, y'all. We're down this next spot. We moved a little bit down that ledge where. We saw some grouper and Carson got a grouper and I got that yellow jack. Not too far off, same area, seeing good bottom. Lots of life down there. See by the chart here. Look at that. Anyway, lots of stuff down there. Tossed a bunch of jump balls. Not the biggest I've ever seen, but definitely. Good size. Yeehaw. I toss them in the box. Get going. So I got my fish in the boat. Looks like it's about 15 pounds or so. Not a giant fish, but sometimes on these hard to get viz days, that's all it takes is a normal size fish. And currently got Carson's job. Job making jump balls. Slowly just gonna dropping them down in. Let them sink on down. Let them do their job. Bring in all the fish. Pretty cool. Anyway, I'm gonna keep doing this and Carson's got a fish, Ed's got a fish. Or Carson and I both have a fish, and now we gotta get Ed on a fish, so yeehaw, enjoy. All right, here we are back in the water. Yeah, that stuff was bringing him up. We are telling him to do some sand chunks. Do you have any more oats or anything? He's got a big old bonita we were chunking up. Or you can just hop in. I'll, I'll chum up. The spot was really lively. I liked the spot. see those blue parrot fish tons of blue parrot fish here tons of yellow tail you can see that mutton snapper I'm lining up on and that was an absolutely massive mutton snapper if you look at the size of it here I'd say that one was 35 inches maybe bigger it's probably the biggest one I've ever seen but if you look at my hand here if you back it up a little bit, I actually grabbed on to where the uh, shooting line connects to my real line and I lost the fish. I put a different knot than I'm used to on there. Uh, it's a quick release so it's easier to pull the shooting line out of the fish if the shaft gets stuck. And I accidentally pulled on that when I was trying to pull that fish up and I lost that fish and that $100 to $110 shaft. I was pretty frustrated at this point, so I didn't shoot anything else. I just kind of said, all right, I got my grouper. All right, y'all, we're here. We're back in the dock. We uh, just tied up, getting ready to go to weigh-ins. Got a pretty nice uh, cooler here. Not too shabby. Got a big black grouper, real big yellow jack. Wait, what's hiding under that yellow? Jack? Another one. Another good day. It was a good day out there. Lost a shaft on a uh, really large mutton. I think I got some footage of that, so it's a little frustrated after that. Didn't shoot anything else, but anyway, we're gonna go to weigh-ins. Got some pretty good fish. Anyway, yeehaw. Mm -hmm.
All right, y'all, I'm here with my son, James. James, can you say hi? Hi. Been trying to record the uh, outro here for a while. Um, but anyway, I got James, watching James. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and record it with him here. I hope it's not too distracting. You're wondering probably how we did at weigh-ins. Well, guess what? We decided not to weigh in. Very good job counting. We decided not to weigh in. Uh, anyway, after reading the rules, um, we saw a portion on there, I'll link it up here, where it says, no other diver is allowed to assist you uh, in retrieving the fish until you have one hand on the boat. And in both Carson and Maya's case, um, Carson, to help secure the fish from the sharks, which was the right move, grabbed the shaft, swam, and swam that and the fish up uh, to help out. Also in Carson's case, both Ed and I came to help him out because um, we were concerned for the fish and for Carson. Uh, and we wanted to make sure that we got uh, both those things were secured. Uh, both because we respect the fish, we don't want it to go to waste and get fed to sharks, and also for safety of each other. Um, so definitely both the right move. Uh, however, after careful consideration, we just wanted to be honest and fair. Because um, that's just how we are. So we decided not to weigh them in. And we assumed that other people would weigh in fish. Because it is a list. Very good. This is what I'm supposed to say. Uh, we should have at least talked to the judges about weighing it in. And after the weigh-in period was over, um, right before the award ceremony, I decided to go up and talk to uh, Tony. He's a nice guy, super nice guy at Forever Young. Shout out to Tony, but anyway, he reviewed the footage. He's like, dude, that's totally good. We don't want anybody, um, any fish getting taken to sharks. You know, that rule is mainly in place. So somebody doesn't shoot a fish, it goes in a hole and they go get it by scuba or something like that. Some sort of unfair advantage. When clearly all Carson did was protect the fish. So that probably would have been fair game. And uh, anyway, and Janice also came over, who is another organizer of the event and took a look at the footage and said, yeah, I don't see why we wouldn't submit that. So moral of the story, always talk to the judges if it's at all questionable. And this is the moment where we realized that no one else weighed in a fish and Carson and I would have got first and second place. All right, one more announcement, guys. You know, uh, Should have entered, would have won it. Uh, oh, so anyway. Um, big thanks to everybody who put on that event. It was awesome, had a good time, and we look forward to it next year. You guys should come next year. It's May 1st every year. You win some, you lose some, you learn some. Till next time, y'all. All right, James, can you say bye? Yeehaw. Bye, yeehaw. Yeehaw. See you next time, guys.